Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and this is Julie Oliver and she's not a scientist but she does like chewing up science papers. Hmm, lucky she's cute. And in this video we will be investigating something that Julie also spends a lot of time doing, namely sleeping. And specifically, we will be looking at how sleep helps the immune system. So let's go back to the science and see what we can find out. So we all know that if we don't get a good night's sleep, the next day we don't feel the best and have difficulty concentrating. But lack of sleep can cause problems that go beyond how you feel the next day. That's because as well as providing much needed rest for the mind and body, sleep also ramps up the immune system. So let's have a closer look at how that happens. So this paper with the catchy name of Sleep and Inflammation, Partners in Sickness and in Health, was published in Nature Reviews Immunology. And it is what is known as a review paper, which is a paper that summarises the state of research for a particular topic. In this case, sleep and immune system. So what does the paper tell us? Let's have a look. So this figure summarises what happens when we are exposed to some kind of stressor. This could be a pathogen like bacteria or a virus or cellular damage from an injury. Initially, the peripheral immune system goes into action producing cytokines and peptides to help combat the stress. This response signals the central nervous system to induce inflammatory cytokine activity in the brain, which alters sleep patterns. And this leads to an increase in total sleep time and sleep efficiency, as well as increased duration of what is known as slow wave sleep and decreased duration of rapid eye movement sleep. By doing this, your brain is able to maximize production of various immune cells and proteins, which improves your chances of recovering from infection. And this is why you will feel fatigued when you are unwell. It is your body's way of telling you that you need to sleep to maximize your immune response. And it is also why you shouldn't ignore your body and try to soldier on. Because if you do, it is likely to take even longer to get better. So this is why getting sleep is important if you get infected with a virus or other pathogen. But what about before you get infected? Are you better able to fight off infections if you are not sleep deprived? Let's have a look. This study was published in a journal called Sleep, which is a very appropriately named journal. It involved 164 healthy men and women whose sleep was recorded with a wrist monitor, just like this one, except it just monitored sleep and not exercise. They kept track of their sleep for seven days, and then they were inoculated with nasal drops containing a strain of rhinovirus, which is one of the viruses that causes the common cold. Then they monitored them for five days to see if they actually caught colds. So what happens? Let's have a look. This graph shows the proportion of people who got sick with a cold versus the average amount of nightly sleep that they got over seven days. And I think you'll agree the results are quite stark. For those people who got less than five hours sleep a night, there was a 45% chance that they would actually get a cold. Whereas for those who got more than seven hours sleep, there was only a 17% chance. And these values have been adjusted for age and antibody status prior to infection. So we know the difference we are seeing is definitely from sleep and not a confounding factor. So that's how sleep can improve your chances if you are infected with a virus. But what about following vaccination? Could getting a good night's sleep improve your immune response to a vaccine? You can probably guess what the answer is going to be, but let's have a quick look anyway. This study was published in JAMA and compared the antibody response to the influenza vaccine between people who were sleep deprived and people who got a good night's sleep. The sleep deprived subjects had their sleep time restricted for four hours for six nights and they got their vaccination between nine and 10 on the morning following the fourth short night. So they were sleep deprived both before and after the vaccination. But after that, they were allowed extra sleep of up to 12 hours a night for seven days to recover. The control group, on the other hand, maintained normal sleep times throughout the study. This is what they found. The white circles show the antibody levels before vaccination and the black circles show the levels after 10 days. As you would expect, there is quite a bit of variation between individuals. But what is clear is that overall, the antibody response was much better in those who were not sleep deprived. 
So if you are planning on getting a vaccination, do your best to get a good night's sleep. Of course, in some people, the immune system works a little too well and forms a response to things that it shouldn't. For some, the effects will be just hay fever-like symptoms, but for others, it can result in anaphylactic shock or autoimmune diseases. Can sleep help in this case? Let's have a look. This study was published in the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology, and it looked at the effects of both sleep deprivation and exercise on people with peanut allergies. Allergy sufferers underwent three open peanut challenges in random order. One challenge was with exercise following each dose, one was with sleep deprivation preceding the challenge, and finally, with no intervention. And this is what they found. For those people who were sleep deprived before the challenge, the amount of peanuts required to induce an allergic reaction was 45% less, which is quite a difference. And again, shows the importance of sleep for a properly functioning immune system. Interestingly, exercise immediately following the peanut challenge also lowered the peanut threshold necessary for an allergic reaction. But remember, this is exercise immediately following exposure to an allergen. It doesn't mean you shouldn't exercise at other times. So it's pretty clear that sleep benefits the immune system, but getting a good night's sleep is easier said than done. Some science-based tips that may work include ensuring you get exposed to plenty of bright light in the morning and keeping the lights dimmed after dark. If you can't help looking at your phone, you can run your apps in dark mode. This is what my YouTube channel looks like in dark mode. You should also make sure your bedroom isn't too warm and you don't consume any stimulants like caffeine in the evening. All of these things will help your body produce melatonin at the right time. Melatonin is a natural sleep hormone, but if you're over 50 like me, it is possible that you may no longer be producing enough melatonin, even with these cues. So speak to your healthcare professional about potentially taking some as a supplement if you think this could be you. Now, there are lots of other tips that can help some people get a good night's sleep. So let us know in the comments what has worked for you because maybe it could help someone else. One thing that a number of people have suggested to me is never using your bed for anything other than sleeping. For me personally, this is the worst tip ever. If I get into bed and just sort of, you know, close my eyes, my mind starts racing and I stay awake for hours. I find I fall asleep much more easily if I distract myself with a book, a TV show or a YouTube video. But you may be different, so let me know. Finally, if you find you are unable to get a good night's sleep after trying all the tips, please see a healthcare professional because it is possible your insomnia is a result of a more serious health condition like sleep apnea, for instance. Now, if you'd like to read the papers that I've discussed yourselves, you'll find links to them in this video's description. And please remember, this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. So thank you for listening. And if you'd like to see more videos in the future, please hit the subscribe button.